my name is Julie Stuckey, and I'm a child psychologist. Okay, tell your last name. S-T-U-C-K-E and PhD, if you need that. Okay, of course. Um, he worked far hard for that. <laughs> um, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been here at the hospital for 21 years. Okay, so, um, and I've been in news for 23. So when it comes to how things have changed a lot, the problems back then are different than right. the problems now. Just kind of mm -hmm. talk about the evolution of some of the things you've seen over the last 21 years. I mean, certainly over the last 21 years, we've seen the increase in the school shootings. That's kind of a new phenomenon in the last 20 years. So I've seen more anxiety coming from kids who are worried about that happening in their school. Um, and as we're talking about, we're starting to see drills happen in schools where they're starting to try and prepare um, for an active shooter situation. Um, and because of that, I am seeing a lot more anxiety uh, in kids and, and even some of the teenagers are very frightened about these situations. You, have you talked with someone that was either involved in a school shooting or maybe, um, well, uh, first of all, have you talked with anyone that was no, involved? No, I've never actually seen anybody who was in a school shooting. And, and that also speaks to the fact that these things don't really happen that often. You know, we hear about every single one that happens, so we feel like it's happening all of the time. But the chance of any one child being involved in a school shooting is really minimal. I think the statistics I saw recently was one in 600 million are going to be involved in a school shooting. So your chances of being in a car accident are way higher than being involved in a school shooting. Can you talk a little bit about the anxiety portion? You said that you are seeing some that maybe they saw a, a promo for it. Maybe they've been involved in a drill. Um, right. What are some of the things that they say to you when, when these things are happening or the involvement or the worry? Well, I think a lot of kids don't always understand what's happening when there's a drill. I think some of them are confused and they think, is something really bad is happening so then they're scared and they're you know they're worried they're afraid something bad's going to happen to them they're not going to make it home that day um, and I do will have I, I do have some kids who will you know text their parents in the middle of all of this and we'll talk about how scared they are and that they love them and you know almost these goodbye texts because they're that frightened even though it's often just a drill um, I have also seen some kids who's um, who've had teachers say things that have frightened them so teachers have made comments that that, um, to the effect that, you know, this is very likely to happen in our school. And that has been very scary um, for, for young and for older kids to hear that from a teacher. So do you think it's because, is it like a lack of training or a lack of information or the fact that it's so new that, that maybe they're just saying the wrong things even yeah. if they mean to help? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if they say that because they want the kids to take it really seriously and they don't understand that they have some really anxious kids in their classroom. Um, you know, saying that to some kids is not going to be a big deal. Some kids are going to just, whatever, no big deal. But other kids are going to take it very seriously and they're going to they're gonna ruminate about it. They're going to think about it. They're going to worry about it. And, and, and usually go home and talk to their parents about it too. And that's when I hear about it. So you, you have actually had children say that I had a teacher that said something that upset me. I have. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'll touch back on that in a minute. Okay. Um, the, the drills, do you, people still have the same anxiety about the shooter drills that they do of tornado or, or fire drills? Do some people worry about that? I think there is more anxiety around the shooter drills. And I think schools have to walk a really fine line when it comes to those drills, you know, I think, um, you know, most schools will do lockdown drills now, or that's what they refer to them. And, you know, those are used in a lot of different situations. So that might be used if there's an active shooter. It might be used if there's somebody in the community, kind of somebody's robbed a bank, right, in the, the location of the school, and so they need to lock the school down. Um, but they usually, um, you know, they, they practice those, they call them lockdowns. Um, they're still frightening for some kids, but um, I think most kids have learned how to deal with that. I think it's when you get into these more elaborate drills that this is what's really traumatizing kids. And from what I understand, some of the teachers too, when you bring somebody into the school with a, a gun with blanks in it, or I've even heard of schools having um, guns with like the pellets, rubber pellets, and teachers being shot with the rubber pellets, that that's really traumatic um, to the kids and to the teachers. Do you think that we're just numb to some of the older drills, like you said, lockdown drills? I mean, that used to be scary if you've never had one, mm -hmm. but then if mm -hmm. you have one, we've just had it for so long. Do you think that maybe we'll eventually become numb to this and it won't be as traumatizing for them? Well, I, I think it just depends. I mean, I think if 
I don't know that anybody's ever going to get numb to these really elaborate drills because people have histories. So if you're somebody who has, um, you know, maybe a history of domestic violence in your home, you're probably not going to get numb to seeing somebody waving a gun around or hearing the gunshot in the hallway. I understand some schools are doing that, that they're doing some training where they're bringing people in and um, showing teachers what it sounds like, what the gunshots sound like in the hallway. But, you know, if you're somebody who has a history of trauma, you're probably not going to get used to that, that that's going to be traumatizing every single time. Is there something, well, first of all, what do these teachers, what do these trainers, what do these people need to do that are holding these drills need to do to help a child emotionally adjust? I mean, is there preparation ahead of time while it's happening? I mean, in right. your, in your well, expertise. Well, in my opinion, I don't think they need these, these kinds of drills. From everything that I have read, there's no research that suggests these kind of drills are any more effective than just educating people verbally or through writing. So I'm not sure that these drills should even be happening, these really elaborate ones where they're bringing people into the school and they're simulating shooting shootings um, but I think even when they just have lockdown drills at the school I think it's a good idea for the schools to communicate to parents ahead of time we're having one of these drills so let your child know um, so that parents can talk to those really anxious kids I mean talk to all the kids but but some of the kids are much less bothered than others so for the really anxious kids to let them know what's happening that this is just a drill that you're gonna be safe nothing bad is happening so um, letting them know ahead of time it's just a drill I don't think anybody needs to practice, you know, throwing things at a, a pretend shooter or jumping out a window. Um, that's pr not going to serve anybody's purpose. So in your expert uh, opinion, you feel like these drills are doing more damage than good? The, the really um, elaborate, uh, the elaborate ones, yes. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about say they've gone through an elaborate drill, say your mm -hmm. child comes home, maybe they're texting you, like you said, they're getting that message, mm -hmm. uh, the parent is. What do you need to do? What are the steps you need to take to make sure that that child feels comfortable or can help recover from anything like this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think obviously talking to the child is the most important thing. So making sure that that child is talking about what happened to them and how they felt, what was going on. You know, watching them to see if there are any changes in their behavior or their emotions. And if you're seeing any signs that they really are having a hard time, you know, they're having terrible dreams about this. Um, they're talking about it nonstop. They suddenly aren't eating eating as much, they can't sleep very well. So if you're seeing some of these signs of trauma, then you probably want to take them to see a professional. And in your opinion, within the last few years, and even maybe since you've been practicing, um, are there more kids that suffer from this? Are there more kids with the PTSD or anxiety? What would you say is like the top? You know, I, I have not seen kids who have been through these elaborate drills, so I don't know how often they're happening in this area. Um, I know they've happened out of state. I've read about those, but I have not heard from children here that they're being exposed to these really elaborate drills. Um, so I, I, I'm not seeing that or hearing that or, or hearing about more trauma because of these, because I, I haven't had any kids who've gone through these kind of drills. Um, I just see a lot of really generally anxious kids who will who will worry about school shootings and you know they'll talk about the lockdown drills and so I'm definitely hearing more of that. So there's an increase just in general. Is there a reason behind kids that maybe suffer PTSD or anxiety? Not necessarily the shootings but are you seeing an increase just in general of anxious scared kids because of technology or access to information or is there anything like a link? Well, you know, it's hard to say because I've always seen anxious kids. It's kind of one of my areas of specialty. So I, I still see a lot of anxious kids. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest, if there's an increase. My guess, if I had to guess, I would say that yes, probably with technology, with the proliferation of information, with, you know, us hearing about every little bad thing that happens in the world. For kids who tend to be anxious, they're going to worry about all those things happening to them, even though as adults we know the chances that happening are very slim. And is there like a top, uh, when you, when I say an anxious kid, an anxiety, mm -hmm. PTSD, mm -hmm. do you have like mm -hmm. a, is it like dogs, is it, is it, is it weather, is it, is there like a list um, of top ten, top five? Um, probably, you know, I see a lot of kids with generalized anxiety disorder, so those are kids who are just worried about everything. So they'll worry about the weather, they'll worry about their safety, they'll worry about their parents' safety, they'll worry about school and their grades, they'll worry about their future. Those are probably some of the biggies. Okay.